afraid. God is our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will I not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let not your heart be troubled, Ye believe, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall we shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Can we give God thanks today? But thanks be to God. Glory to the high. Glory to the highest. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. Clap your hands, all ye people, and begin to bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice, even in this sad time, we rejoice. Even while we're complex, we rejoice. Even while we don't understand, we rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and uh, be glad in it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Today we come to celebrate the life of our dear sister, mother, grandmother, aunt, just a wonderful person of God, Sister Phyllis White Harrison. Come on, let's celebrate her life. Come on, let's celebrate the life of our dear sister. God has been good to us to be able to live life with this precious jewel. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. Let's celebrate God for the life of Sister Phyllis White Harrison. Thank you, Lord for this awesome privilege and opportunity. We bless God today for this wonderful family. We are praying for you. Amen. We are here for you. And we are continuously upholding you by the word of God. We praise God for the pastor of the Better Life Church of God in Christ, none other than our superintendent, Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair Sr. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Superintendent designee Tony L. McNair Sr. And to all of the elders and pastors and clergy that are in the room on today, our Old Testament scripture is coming from Elder Malcolm Elmore, who shall read the 34th number of Psalm, verses 17 through 19. Then Elder Hermley Hicklin will follow with the New Testament scripture. And then we will have our hymn, Hold to His Hand. Say amen as they come. Psalm 34, the 17th verse. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of them all. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Can we give God a praise for that? Praise the Lord, church. Our New 
Testament the scripture is taken from St. John 14, 1 through 3. And it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth on the move can stand. But build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Let's sing together. Oh, time is filled with swift transition. None on earth, none on earth, none move can stand. You are to build your hopes. Hold to God some change in hand. Oh, you are to hold. Everybody be 
with the Lord. And we thank God that Sister Phyllis has made it on over. You are too old. today for this wonderful family you have given us to walk with us to sing with us to pray with us but thank God for this woman that's laying before us today who has been an example of holiness thank you oh God I thank you how she yield herself as a servant for the church of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad, Lord, that I had a chance to meet her and to know her because she's been an example for the church. I thank you, Lord how she raised her children in the church. Hallelujah. And it's wonderful to see the rest of this family standing with her today in her own way. In the name of Jesus. God, I praise you for them. Thank you, Jesus. How Sister Phyllis worked with the church. Thank you, Jesus, how she stood strong. She wouldn't fall, but she held on to God on changing hands. In the midst of her sickness, she never lost a smile. She kept that beautiful smile on her face. God, yes, Lord, we love you today. We are glad today that she made it in with her maker. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody ought to thank him. Somebody ought to give him a praise. Because God is good. God is merciful. 
God is peace. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you read the bulletin here? It said she worked faithfully with Christ's cathedral. And I'm glad when my wife and I came in the transition to be a part of better life, she waited until Pastor I got here. And she came to me and said, I want to know, is it all right to join church with better life? I said, yes, darling, we are together now. And we are going forward to do what the Lord say do. With the church say yes. Say yes. Oh, Lord. Excuse me, Pastor, I just feel like preaching. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a great big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for being here today. And uh, Elder Jonathan is coming at this time. But uh, it's most definitely, uh, I can say it's a sad occasion, uh, but it's a joyous occasion as well. Amen. Because we know that Sister Phyllis gave her life to the Lord. And that's a marvelous thing. When you come to a celebration such as this, sometimes you can't always have that confidence. Uh, but I'm happy today because this life is fragile. And uh, when I went to go visit her in the hospital, I was expecting uh, her not to be able to interact with me. And I went in there on one Sunday afternoon, one Sunday morning, and uh, I began to pray and I began to sing. And uh, LaVoya said, she can hear you. When I came in the room, she said, she can hear you. So I began to pray and I began to sing. And she opened up her eyes and looked at me. And I probably worshiped for about a good 10, 15 minutes. And she worshiped right along with me that entire time. And I left there. I left there. I was sad. Yes. I, when I left there, I was sad because I knew what she had accepted. I knew that she had had a personal conversation between herself and God. And, uh, you know, we don't always want people to make the decisions that they make. But uh, when I left there, I was sad because I understood that. But then my heart began to rejoice because so many leave here without the opportunity or really you know, not knowing that the, the, the Bible says he comes like a thief in the night. And you don't know the time, the day, nor the hour when the Lord shall require your soul. But I'm glad to know today that Sister Phyllis was ready for her Lord and Savior. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I make you rule Lord over many. Let's receive Elder Jonathan McNair at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands if you love Jesus in this place. I need y'all to help me sing this song. I need y'all to help me sing this song. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. I need my choir out there to help me. If you're a soprano, if you're an alto, if you're That's it. I promise him that I would serve him until I die. And I'm fighting, say, I need to hear you. I had heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain. And I'm fighting, say, come on right here. I've been up, I've been down, but never to the ground. And I'm fighting, say, I'm fighting, sir. 
your change come Hold out For your breakthrough Hold out Just hold out to the Lord. Lord, have your way. If you hold out, you'll get your crown. At this time, we will have reflections representing the church. 
District Missionary Emeritus Emerita Verna McNair and a representative from our the Portsmouth District, District Missionary Valerie Morris. Friends, Missionary Doretha Allen, the one who she, she worked so closely with to keep our sanctuary beautiful, Sister Virginia Holt. And then uh, the family, her son in love, nobody like him, Elder Jamar Parker, and her nephew, Elder Kevin Blunt. We do ask that you would do your best to keep your comments to two minutes, two minutes. Amen. Let's say amen as they come in that order. Amen. Following the acknowledgments, Sister Debbie Daniels, the church clerk of Better Life Church of God in Christ, will come uh, with the acknowledgments, cards, and condolences. Special honor to our pastor, Pastor Dwayne S. McNair Sr., and to all who have gathered here to today in this celebration this home going of this great woman of God, and most especially to the family, Leroyal, Kenneth, Andrea, and all of the family. We are praying for you, we honor you today, and we are here to celebrate with you. Once again, God in his infinite wisdom has sent his death angel into this life and to receive one of our own in the person of Sister Phyllis Harrison, releasing her from her suffering, from her pain, and from her sickness, and calling her into a new and glorious life with her master. We cherish her memory of her beautiful Christian character, which she exemplified every day that she lived. She radiated the fruit of the spirit. She radiated love. She radiated joy. She radiated peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. And I added to that, that she radiated servanthood. <laughs> servanthood. Doing what she could here at the church and supporting her church, the Better Life Church of God in Christ. Not only did she try to help beautify by keeping it clean, she also radiated a part of the church's ministry. And if I say this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Even after the pastor spoke the word and taught the word of God, guess what she had going on? She had a ministry going on to help the church's ministry to go on. And that is right out there on that table, those little books, <laughs> those little, little books, the daily bread. She kept the ministry going on even after the message was ended for the day. That we will really, really miss. But I can say this, we're going to keep that daily bread ministry going on. We're going to keep that daily bread ministry right out there on that table. And we're going to remember her by that. As a tribute of our love and remembrance of her dedicated life, we humbly submit and accept the unerring wisdom of God. He's too wise to make a mistake. And for that, we thank God. We thank God for the example that she left on record for her family. For her family and for her church. The Better Life Church of God in Christ will be in constant prayer for the family, with the family, Leroy, we love you. We are praying for you. Andrea, Kenneth, we are praying for you. We love you, and our prayers will be going with you wherever you go. Keep mom in your heart. 
She's gone on to a better place. But in your heart, she can live, and you can live out her ministry. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. To the family, I would like to read Lamentations 3 and 32. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is God's unfailing love for us. I just want the family to know so great during these hard times, so great is God's unfailing love for you. Trust in the love of God to bring you through these very difficult times. I love you all so very much. Good afternoon to the family. You have my condolences. You are my family as well, and I love you all. Even though I knew you were leaving and I had a chance to say goodbye, you were gone before I knew it and only God knows why. So many times I would think of you, so many tears I have cried. If love alone was enough, this is true, you would still be by my side. In life, I love you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, you hold a special place. From this day forward, you always will. It hurts so badly to lose you, but you didn't go alone. A part of me went with you the day God called you home. I miss your smile, and I'm grateful for our friendship. I will treasure our memories of our talks, our laughs, our time, and our shopping trips. You are in heaven now, and I'm glad your pain came to an end. You will never be forgotten. Rest in peace until we meet again. Good morning, family. Friends, my heart is heavy, but I know God don't make no mistake. And so I'm just gra grateful to be here to take a part in her passing. Until we meet again, those special moments of you will always bring a smile. If only I could have you back just for a little while, then we could sit and talk again just like we used to do. You always make so very much and always will to me. The fact that you are no longer here will always cause me pain, but you are forever in my heart until we meet again. I'm just grateful that I knew her, and I'm grateful for the relationship that we had, how we used to spend time on the phone just talking about the Lord and talking about scripture. So I know I'll miss her. But I realize, even though I love her, God loved her more. I appreciate Jean and Dory giving me one of their minutes each. Appreciate that. I met Nana for the first time about two months into dating little Shirley, or as most of you know, Leroy. And if you ever got to meet Mama Shirley, you know why that's one of my pet names for her. It was at Mama Shirley's house. Phyllis was rocking in a rocking chair in the living room with very few words to say that day. Being the first time that I met her, I didn't know if anything was wrong with her or anything like that. But she was smiling. Fast forward three months later, and there she was at me and Royal's wedding, congratulating us, welcoming me into her family, and smiling. And that will be a continuous thing that I would associate with Phyllis for the rest of the time that I knew her, that smile. 
it could easily diffuse a tense situation. It eased the heavy heart on a tough day, and it made Nana easily approachable. When Kira came into our lives, me and Roya were initially flying by the seat of our pants, being new to this whole parenting thing. But I remember that phone conversation like it was yesterday. Roya called Phyllis up and said, hey, um, yeah, so we have this baby, and um, we ain't think about the fact that we still got to go to work this morning. <laughs> but before she could even finish saying morning, there was Phyllis on the other end of the line saying, bring that baby over here, Royal. And thus began Kira's journey with her best friend, Nana. And it made sense because Phyllis was excited whenever she had the chance to see and spend time with all of her grandchildren. She looked forward to it, it gave her great joy, and it literally helped to keep her young. Nana was spry and energetic for her age. The only person her age that I think had more energy than her goes to this church right here, Mother Rose Johnson. Because nobody else over the age of 70 can do cartwheels like Mother Rose Johnson. <laughs> and speaking of young and spry, I'm a very observant person. And through the years, I got to notice how men, whether in-house church services or outgoing services, whether at district revivals, whether at jurisdictional or national church services, matured aged men would offer a plate of food, their HRT bus pass, their AARP discount coffee card, their Hardee's breakfast coupons, heck, their social security check if they could, anything just to try to have a longer conversation with Nana. But Nana was oblivious to most of it because in her later years, Nana only had eyes for Jesus Christ. And when I say Phyllis was sold out on Christ, I mean she was sold out. The moment you walked into her home, you were greeted with wall-to-wall -wall stereo sound, Christian music, and news playing. And I'm not talking about Kirk Franklin and Mary Mary. I mean angelic choirs and violins and harps and grand Christian symphonies playing to the point where you were afraid to change the radio station or even turn the volume down because you felt like God had an attack dog, angel standing guard, ready to zap anybody who dared even think about messing with that radio. I don't know if they actually have turned it off now. It might still be playing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Being in Nana's home was like sitting in heaven's lobby area, waiting to hear your name being called to come in. And Nana always had an encouraging word, whether she liked you or whether she thought you needed professional help. She always had a kind word. That's why it was easy doing little things for her because she would welcomely do anything for you. Whether it was visit and sit with you, or whether you needed her to drive the getaway car, Nana didn't ask a whole lot of questions. She was that trusted friend. So to Royal, to Andrea, and to Kenny, thank you so much for sharing your mom with me and with the world. We appreciate it. And for allowing Kira to experience the joy known as the Nana experience. Nana, I know your body's right there, but I know your spirit is looking at us now. Thank you so much for the love that you showed, not simply by saying I love you, but by demonstrating it in your actions and your genuine loving nature. Several times throughout the year, we traditionally go to the gravesite of Leroy, Shirley, and Linda so that Phyllis could refresh their flowers and so that we can have conversations with them. And now we get to do the same with Nana as well. Nana, rest well, we love you.
Good afternoon. It's not a lot to say at this point. Uh, it seems like my Aunt Phyllis was loved by this ministry, by you, the people of God. So we, the family, we thank you for that. I don't know her from pushing a vacuum cleaner. I don't know her from doing cartwheels. I just know her as Aunt Phyllis. Uh, from Ingleside to St. Andrews to right down the street, Aunt Phyllis has always been the same. She's always been a good woman, always been a loving woman, always been a caring woman. And what stands out, stands out to me more than anything, going to visit Aunt Phyllis at her house, uh, I think last time was two weeks before she took her last breath, and in the hospital as well. In the hospital, when she first got there, her spirits were high. Even when she started to decline, her spirits were high. And I remember asking her, Danielle, I think y'all were there that first night, Aunt Phyllis, are you going to be okay regardless of what happened? If he heal you or not? And she, yes, I know in whom I believe. And then that last time at her house when she was, her body was breaking down, and I asked you to get out the room and go get my wife. And we were back there talking to Aunt Phyllis, and it was the same thing, Aunt Phyllis. Are you okay? Well, come what may, are you okay? And she couldn't talk much, but baby, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. So to my first cousins, take peace in that. She ain't coming back, and you don't want her to come back. But take peace in the fact your mother went out on her own terms, in her right mind. And that's just not for you all, but for any believer in the building. Yeah, preachers do what I'm about to do, so give me my 20 seconds, right? If you in this building and you name the name of Christ, death is not the end for you. And we're here to celebrate a woman that professed her faith and walked it out until the end. So again, we thank you. Aunt Phyllis, I know you can't hear me. Your son-in-law just said it too, but we're going to talk to you anyway. I appreciate you. You use my short, my short Aunt Phyllis. And if anything, I could leave to the family again. Hold fast to what she put in y'all. Do what she would have wanted y'all to do. Y'all three, spouses out the way, kids out the way. Y'all stay together. Because that's what she would have wanted. She would have gave up her life for y'all's life. And that's what she did. God bless. Um, like I said, that smile um, offered to bring her chicken because, you know, when then when she couldn't swallow, I told her I would puree it, and if that wasn't enough, I'll put some Kool-Aid in it for her. <laughs> she thought that was a good idea, so I'm happy. We have a, quite a few cards that came for the family. We're going to read a few. I'm going to start with the letters and the resolution from Better Life Church. Memorial Resolution commemorating the life of Sister Phyllis White Harrison. Though your days among us were too brief and our grief at your loss is never ending, we draw comfort from the knowledge that you have found safe refuge in the Lord and in our hearts where no darkness or pain can touch you now. We bless you with love, light, and gratitude. Whereas Sister Phyllis White Harrison of Better Life Church of God in Christ was removed from this life on March 14th, 2024, we deeply deplore the loss of our sister and friend, yet bow submissively to the will of our creator who does all things well. And whereas we, the members of Better Life Church of God in Christ, want missionary LaRoyal Parker, Elder Jamar Parker, Sister Andrea Satterfield, Brother Kenneth Harrison, Sister Danielle Harrison, and the entire Parker and Harrison families to know that our hearts are with you as we bid goodbye to Sister Phyllis. And whereas the death of Sister Phyllis does not diminish the profound benediction of a life well lived, 
in such godly service, nor our admi admiration of and affection for her example. And whereas Sister Phyllis had a tremendous passion for serving God as she joyfully visited the sick, kept our church well maintained, and faithfully served at Better Life Church of God in Christ. Therefore, be it resolved that we tender our deepest sympathies to Sister Phyllis Harrison's daughters, sons, grandchildren, relatives, and all who are in mourning and implore the God that we bestow, that we serve to bestow upon them a large measure of his consoling grace. More importantly, we realize that this great loss to her family and to Better Life Church is truly heaven's gain. Therefore, be it resolved that as we bow to a greater will than our own, we rest in the knowledge that one day we will be united with Sister Phyllis again in joy and in the fullness of God's mercy. Let it, further, let it be further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be furnished to the bereaved family and humbly submitted in faith and appreciation for the gift of our time with Sister Phyllis White Harrison on this 25th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. The Better Life Church of God in Christ offers its con sincerest condolences to Sister Harrison's family and shares this Bible verse in her honor. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Prayerfully submitted, Dwayne S. McNair Sr., pastor, and Debbie Daniels, church clerk. To Andrea Satterfield, LaRoyal Parker, Kenneth Harrison Jr. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4. On behalf of the extended Harrison family, we would like to express our sincerest, sincerest sadness at the passing of your mother and grandmother, Mrs. Phyllis White Harrison. While words are so inadequate to express how one feels when a loved one finishes this earthly journey, please know that you and your family are in our thoughts and prayers. No one can replace a loved one, but we trust God to comfort your grieving hearts. While she is no longer here with you, God in his wise providence will surely meet you and the family at every point of your need. He knows what you need during this time much better than anyone else. His word assures us that he will never leave, leave you nor forsake you. We want to encourage you to remember the wonderful times you shared with your mother and keep her memory deep in your hearts. We know that your heart is heavy and you are hurting, but be strengthened daily knowing your mother is now at peace. The Lord is faithful, and we trust him to comfort and strengthen you now and in the days to come. Know that her life continues in the immeasurable contributions that she has made to you. Your mother has finished her course and is now resting from her labor and a life well lived. Her reward is that of all who remain in the faith. That is to one day hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. He will grant you strength, peace, and comfort in the days to come. Remember that God will never leave you or forsake you. Psalms 30 and 5 reminds us that weeping may remain for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In 1898, the hymnist Eliza Hewitt penned these words, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. So today we say good rest, we say good Goodbye, rest well, and we will see you in the morning. With love and prayer, your extended Harrison family. This letter comes from the Church of God in Christ, Virginia Second Jurisdiction Women's Department, uh, where Mother Jacqueline G. Holmes is our state supervisor. Missionary Parker, it is with deep regret and heartfelt sympathy to learn of the passing of your mother, Sister Phyllis Harrison. We learned of her loyalty and service to her immediate family and special support and loyalty to her church, the Better Life Church of God in Christ, and her pastor. We know that she was a quiet servant of the church and her loving care was felt in her attendance and in doing what her hands could find to do in support of the church. As we know that like 
life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. And each life is subjected to the divine will of the almighty God. Be assured that she is resting in his mighty arms where sickness, sorrow, and pain will be no more. We know she will be greatly missed, but take courage in, fond, in the fond memories that you shared with her in times past and let them strengthen and comfort you in the days ahead. Our prayers and condolences are with you, the Women's Department, Church of, the Church of God in Christ, Virginia's second iconic jurisdiction. Mother Jacqueline G. Holmes, State Supervisor, Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr., Jurisdictional Prelate. This later letter comes from Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr., pastor of Greater Emmanuel Temple, to the family of Sister Phyllis White Harrison. On behalf of Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr., First Lady Trina Golden, and the Greater Emmanuel Temple Church of God in Christ, we send our love, prayers, and condolences to you in the loss of your mother and loved one. During this difficult time, we commend you to the capable hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The family has been and shall remain in our prayers. We hope that God will graciously grant you and your family a new revelation of his unfailing love and comforting presence. Romans 15 and 13 states, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May his wisdom, power, and grace give you some immediate relief, sustain your healing process, and provide you hope for the living of these days. Know that, know that God promised that he will give you comforting peace and restore your joy on those difficult days. As you go through this time of bereavement, find comfort in the sweet memories of Sister Harrison. We will continue to keep you in our prayers we pray that God will continue to give you peace and comfort. May God's grace and wisdom continue to be with you, for he promised strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. We commit Sister Phyllis White Harrison to the merciful hand of her creator and redeemer. May you know the consolation of the Holy Spirit at this critical time of such irreparable loss. Humbly submitted this 22nd day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024, Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr., Greater Emmanuel Temple, Church of God in Christ, Pastor. <coughs> Celebrating a wonderful life. Missionary LaRoyal and family, joining with you in celebration of a life well lived in honor of someone who meant so much to you and to so many others. Our prayers are with you at the passing of your loved one, Missionary Department of the Better Life Church. As you mourn the loss of someone special, may you find peace in the love of family and strength in the care of friends. LaRoyal and Jamar, if you all need anything, let me know. I love you both, and my prayers are always with you. You have my condolences, LaShawn and Thomas. I think one more here is... Sorrow is not forever. Love is. You've lost someone special. You've lost someone who held a special place in your heart and in your life. Although no one else can truly share the sadness you feel now, May memories of your loved one bring you peace and reassure you that love endures forever. Brittany Watson. In the presence of, our of the time and noticing the time that we have, the rest of the cards have been read and they will be acknowledged by the family at a later time. Thank you. As the musicians play softly, we will have the silent reading of the obituary for Sister Phyllis White Harrison.
Pastor Andrea. I want to thank you for this opportunity to serve in this most impactful time of your lives. I do not take this privilege for granted. But I do thank God for the opportunity to introduce and present to some the pastor of Sister Phyllis Harrison. He is the pastor and establishmentarian of the Better Life Church of God in Christ. Going on 31 years, he is the superintendent of the Portsmouth District of the Church of God in Christ. By his side stands my lovely mother, First Lady Velma Faye McNair. God bless you. After this selection from Evangelist Deshauna Hooker, everyone but the family will stand in honor and respect for the man of God who shall bring forth the word of God, Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair, Sr. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. That everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. I mean, if you have breath in your body, give God some praise on today. Because this is a celebration of life. Hallelujah. Death is not the end. Hallelujah. Jesus, we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We should be rejoicing. Come on, saints. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. He is doing on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Leroy, I love you, sister. Thank you so much for this opportunity to minister. To the rest of the family, I love you and I'm praying for you. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God.
Today we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in the presence of your people. And God, before we ask you for anything, we're going to thank you for everything. You woke us up this morning, gave us our right mind, activities of our limbs. You are there all the time. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A few acknowledgments before I go further to Elder Pastor Dwayne McNair, Jr. Amen. The pastor of Trinity Temple Church of God in Christ, we praise God for you and your excellence. Um, Evangelist Deshauna, I'm going to have to talk to Cece about you. afraid to say God has blessed that young lady with such an anointed voice in ministry. To my beloved mother and father, I must recognize them first. 
up front because they are the reason why I am here on today. And I just want to spend a little bit of time before I, I'm not a long-winded Deacon Craig, I'm not a long-winded preacher, but sometimes if I get happy, I might, y'all might leave me here by myself. But as I looked across the, the length and the breadth and to the elders, elder staff and ministerial staff of Better Life, I thank God for those who are here today to represent a life well lived. Uh, can, can I, after, in a minute, I'm going to take a personal privilege. Amen. But I have, and as I look across the room, I see a young lady in the yellow. Would you please stand? young lady right there in the yellow, sit beside Sister Margaret, yeah, that one, yeah, and uh, I'm looking into the lights, so I'm not seeing you well, but there's a young man that's here, oh, in the black, in the back, would you please stand and remain standing, amen, thank you, I'm your bigger brother, so you have to do what I ask you to do, amen, then we have the young man on the organ, they are my siblings, Amen. Only one left in California, but we happen to be the God children or the God brother and sister of Sister LaRoyal. Amen. We love you. And they say they love you. Be seated. Amen. Elder Christopher McNair, Dr. Karen P. McNair, Dr. Tony McNair Jr. And they're pushing me, but I don't. everybody under the sound of my voice to this illustrious family. Amen. And uh, we did not hear from, and if I could just give you 30 seconds of my time, if you will come. Uh, Minister Greg, I know that he is a highly decorated uh, person in the military. Amen. But he is a part of the family that was raised with uh, Phyllis. Amen, the Wilson family. And if you would just come just for a moment and stand by my side. I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. I hope I don't make any enemies, but this is recorded and it's being recorded live stream. And it's a part of the memories that we have. God bless you, my brother. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if I get an opportunity. about my Phyllis and they talked about the life that they knew today but I knew it before y'all <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard not to reflect on those I mean who would have known that a life my sister sent me a picture of little Phyllis who would have known at that time that that life would have blossomed into, I mean, this church is hot for a reason, okay? I think there are some things that stand out, and I'm, I'm going to try to just abbreviate because I've had so many different thoughts on this. I had to go to North Carolina a while ago, and I came back, and I had called Phyllis, talked to her. The last time I talked to her, she was like, I feel great. Would, but she sounded great and she said she felt great she was in the hospital at the time <laughs> but when I came back from my trip I told my wife I believe it was on a Wednesday I said I need to go see Phyllis and then on that Thursday I got a call that Phyllis had passed so I said well why I knew it was in my heart to go. So I just started reading in the book of Jonah and I'll just sum it up, you know, that when you get in the unction and God says to go, go now. Go now. But 
I tell you, I know that there's a lot of things that folks want to say, folks want to understand, they want to try to figure out, you know, those kinds of things, you know, but I spent time with Phyllis in a lot of different venues, and those things that are lasting, those things that are real, those things that bring virtue, where everything else was, was gone, you know? I mean, I, I can tell you some times where Phyllis and I, we, I went to her house one time and we were supposed to be listening to this, 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 this ministry. And I sat there and we started talking and we started talking and then we started praying and then we started crying. We never got to the tape. <laughs> we, we, we never got to the tape that we had got there to, to see because there was something being birthed at that time and I didn't know it, I didn't understand it, but it was just rich to me, I never forget it. I've never forget it this day. You know, that was over on Ingleside. Somebody said Ingleside today. That was when she was over in Ingleside, you know, but along the way, God had just cultivated a life worth living in this woman. And I know that there's so much more to be said, and I won't <laughs> belabor it anymore, but Thank you for the opportunity. I didn't know if I get the opportunity to say to Phyllis is the oldest of a group of siblings. You know, we grew up together. Rosalind Washington is my oldest sister. But she was first, and she was so instrumental in my life until the end. So thank you, brother. I, thank you. Bless you. There is a lot that can be said about Phyllis. But I want to go into the word of the Lord and I just thank God and I hope I didn't overlook anybody but to all of you, God bless you. I get to see so many. It's almost like a reunion. Deacon Craig and his wife, God bless you. Amen to our cousins and to everyone under the sound of my voice. Uh, I thought I saw Elder Karen Robinson. Well, she had to go, amen. So many people came to show respect to this lovely family, amen, of which we love so dear. And we want you to remember that <laughs> and how God has blessed us. The word of the Lord is blessed. The word of the Lord is blessed, and I'm going to be reading from the gospel writing, the third chapter of St. John, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, 16 through 19, and then I want to venture over as I close my message to the writing of St. John, chapter 14, 16 through 19. get there straight in a minute. Amen. 14, 1 through 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where is my wife? Please stand, Velma. Please stand. That's my beautiful wife, y'all. Three months ago, she was in the hospital practically dying with Parkinson's, a severe case of Parkinson's. And now if you look at her, you would never be able to tell that God healed her body. I love you. That he gave his only begotten son, but who so ever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. 
And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Today I want to speak in these next few waking moments from the subject, heaven is my goal. Heaven is my goal. There are times in life when we must say goodbye to something or someone. There are times when we must say goodbye to the past. In the midst of life's ups and downs, we should always focus on being ready for whatever the future holds for us. We should say to ourselves that I want to live so God can use me anytime or anywhere. Can you hear me now? Good. Not only were we created in God's image, but we were also created to bring glory to him. That's why yesterday is so important because it is the DNA of who we are. What we have done and the proof of our witness of our life here and now and the life that we live. We would want someone say, to say, like we are saying about Sister Phyllis, a life well lived. In short, our past will tell the story. So we must always remember that at some point in our life, young or old, we will have to say goodbye to yesterday. Yesterday is always behind us. It's in our rear view mirror. You can say that yesterday's got our back. Well, let me qualify that. Yesterday has your back because it will tell the story about you. Or we can say that yesterday can break your back to your future opportunities. Yesterday, yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday, what I did yesterday. Somebody said you could never change what happened on yesterday, but I thank God, let me go to the end of the book, Elder Blunt, Lord have mercy. Because at the end of the story, we can erase our past if we would turn our lives over to Jesus. We can erase our yesterdays where we made mistakes and this and that. And we all do, for the Bible declares that we have sinned. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yesterday. It's important for us to remember that we have to be careful how we manage yesterday. Because yesterday can come back and bite you. I heard a story one time about a person that took off on sick leave and uh, something about electronic media is just get to people, you know? <laughs> Called in sick, can't come into work and then posted everything on Facebook while he was just vacationing himself to death. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say that the internet is the, the attorney's lifeline. They don't need to do a lot of research. They can just go on the internet and lock you up from what you have exposed to yourself. Ask yourself, how do I say goodbye to yesterday? Just a few words about Sister Phyllis. Phenomenal young lady. Phenomenal, always had the same demeanor, demeanor. And I know she was quiet like me, so I know she had a backside. <laughs> because they say you have to watch out for quiet people. You mess with them long enough, you will get just what you deserve. But she was always faithful, always kind. 
she was always ready to greet you with a smile and to say an encouraging word. And I'm not putting on. There are people, there are witnesses everywhere in this place that knew Sister Phyllis. They knew her love for God. And I remember the many, many pre-pandemic hours that we spent in this church on noonday Fridays. She pressed her way to church every Friday to pray with the pastor and to pray with the prayer warriors, to pray that God would help our society, help our country, help our world. She was always into serving the Lord with gladness in whatever way she could. Phyllis was a cornerstone with her walk with God in life. She had a lasting impact on us all. And many called her many things. Nana was probably the, one of the most popular ones. But when I visited Sister Phyllis, Phyllis, my friend and my sister in the hospital, I discovered a few things that she was ready. She was more ready than I was. Because, you know, I said yesterday, I said, y'all, can y'all just slow down a little bit? <laughs> she was ready to take that flight. And you could see it every time you would speak to her in her final days. Yes, it was quick, fast, and a hurry. But God, but God restored her. God gave her life. God gave her the abundance of life. God gave her joy. God gave her peace. God gave her comfort. God helped her in a mighty way. It's important for us to realize that she was ready, she was able, and she worked as a servant of the Most High God to love God with all of her heart, with all of her soul, and with all of her mind, to love her with her life, the life that she gave, the life that she lived. And the devil is trying to get in the way of my notes wherever they went. God be praised. God be praised. So how do you ask yourself, how do you say goodbye to Sister Phyllis that we knew who animated herself yesterday? Well, we look at the scripture. The scripture tells us something amazing about God. In John, the 14th chapter, and uh, the first three verses, Elder Hicklin read them a few moments ago, he said in the scripture, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and where I go, there you will be with me also. In order to say goodbye to yesterday, first of all, you have to acknowledge life. You have to acknowledge the fact that without Christ, we are nothing. For the Bible decided and it said that it is he who have created us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And in order to worship with him, we must worship and enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. We must acknowledge life. We must acknowledge life's work and our responsibility to life's work. The life that we live, somebody said, I want my life to be pleasing and I want to be able to share my life so that my testimony would be a part of my life that my works will follow after me. My works will become my legacy. My works will become who I am and what I've done. And then we must acknowledge yesterday by recognizing that heaven is the place where we should want to be. Heaven is the place where God wants us to abide with him. Heaven, no more 
no more. No more pain. No more suffering. No more water bills. No more heartaches. No more disappointments. Have you, have you ever drove down the street? I was driving down the street this morning, and I'm almost finished. I was driving down the street this morning. There was a police car in front of me, and there was one behind me. But I didn't have no problems with that because my record is clean. Lord, but I remember the days when the police came and I could see them afar off. And I said, Lord, things ain't right. Please let them go the other way. <laughs> uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, I, I, I know y'all don't do stuff like that, but uh, you, you can get in trouble, you know, and a lot of times you get in trouble because of money issues. And one communion Sunday morning when I was very young in ministry with a young family coming down the street with my clergy collar on and a two-bit hoop tee that decided to run when it got ready to run. And I got pulled over by the police with my clergy collar on. But I owed the DMV some money. Y'all never been there. <laughs> and, and, and my wife said, you going to arrest him in his clergy collar? <laughs> And the police said, have a nice day. Get your stuff together. Thank God for grace <laughs> and mercy. You, you know, thank God for grace and mercy as I look to the place where I want to be. I must recognize that the life that I live today has a, plays an impact on the heavenly father that I will see on tomorrow. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you're going to be with me also. That's what keeps me keeping on. I want to see Jesus and look upon his face. But I don't want to get to a place where he says, I never knew you because of my past. God, I want you to forget about my past and to forgive me of my past. And, and I know you can forgive me because you decided after 40 and two generations to come down and to shed your blood because you were the only one that was worthy of sharing your blood. Hallelujah. This week, Passion Week, Sister Phyllis, you decided to take your flight and your celebration on the week that my Jesus, hallelujah, a day after he drove into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, hallelujah. He had a donkey parade, a parade of humility. He said that if somebody like Sister Phyllis and like Brother Dwayne are going to be able to see heaven in his glory, I've got to die. So Jesus decided that he was going to die. And at any moment, he could have gave up. At any moment, he could have said, it's not worth it. But when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that because he died, I can live. Because he died, I can go to God in prayer. And I can ask the Lord, say, Lord, forgive me. Blot out my sins. Blot out my transgressions. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a new life. Take me in to live with you. And Jesus said, I will. All you got to do is confess your sins. And if you confess your sins, he is gracious and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God that Jesus not only died, but on the third day, he rose, declaring all power is in his hands. And that's why somebody said everybody's talking about heaven ain't going. Because they don't want to go. You don't want to make that sacrifice to live a holy life, to live a life of the Bible. 
not the life of a preacher, not the life of necessarily the church organization, but the life of the Bible on the inside of your heart. Sister Phyllis decided that she wanted to live a Bible life, a Bible believing life, giving her life to God in a great way, always faithful always loving always kind she decided that she wanted to make heaven her home and when the time came I could see it all in her eyes I could feel it in her spirit I told my wife that she's not going to stay she's ready to go she could see heaven in her eyes and in her view she could see heaven don't you want to see it well, if you're going to see her, you have to go where she is, live the life she lived, because our lives are a series of snapshots. Oh, my goodness, we talk about the record that's kept in heaven, but many of us didn't realize when they were saying God has a record in heaven, we didn't realize that he had video too. Lord, have mercy, a video snapshot. And when you are living for Christ, you don't have to worry about your back because your past is in your back. But goodness and mercy is back there as well. And he will follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Goodbye, Sister Phyllis. I'll see you soon. Sooner than later. Sooner than we think. Sooner than we can even imagine. Thank God that Sister Phyllis led a life of example before us and that God is able to do it for you. Hallelujah. If we only would give our hearts and our life to Jesus, it's the best way to go. I heard someone sing a song that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. When I was nine years old, God saved my soul. I was sitting on the front row in Vacation Bible School at Mason Memorial Church, 744 Gulf Street. And Elder Joseph Williams was explaining the salvation plan. And I said, God, is it that easy? Hallelujah. And when God saved me, I could feel the unction of the Holy Spirit confirming that salvation. Now I want you to know you're not going to be perfect even after he saves you. But I tell you one thing, you'll grow in grace and you will learn how to live a life free of sin. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. I want heaven to be my home. If you're here today and you're saying to yourself, you have not made that decision, but you want heaven to be your home. I want to pray with you today. Just lift your hands, every, every eye closed and every head bowed. If you're here today and you want to make heaven your home, it starts by a mere confession. It starts by becoming a part of a Bible-believing church so that the pastor and the church leadership can lead you and guide you to the place where you can live a life that would get you a pass to the pearly gates. Streets are paved with gold. Every day is Sunday. The Sabbath have no end. No more, no more, no more struggles. No more being detained in life. If you're here today, can everyone say this prayer with me together for the unbeliever? Father, I come to you now asking you to forgive me of my sins and to destroy my transgressions 
save my life, save my soul. God, I want to make heaven my home. I want you to live in my heart. Forgive me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Today, we turn this portion of the service into the hands of the funeral directors. If anyone could ever write my life story,